Nine in the morning, day one, and these people have a deadline to meet. So welcome to the kickoff of the shopping cart project. This is Palo Alto, California, in the heart of Silicon Valley, and these are designers at IDEO, probably the most influential product development firm in the world. Designers are the reason TVs have square screens, chairs four legs, and toothbrushes nowadays those squishy handles. In fact, it was IDEO that designed those squishy handles. IDEO has designed everything from high-tech medical equipment to the 25-foot mechanical whale in the movie Free Willy and the first computer mouse for Apple. Smith ski goggles, Nike sunglasses, NEC computer screens. Hundreds of products we take for granted. This is uh, called the Neat Squeeze, squeeze tooth, uh, Toothpaste Tube, which... You invented that. The man who runs IDEO is Dave Kelly, a Stanford engineering professor with a Groucho Marx mustache, a dad of genius, and an approach to innovation that usually works. Well, thank you, Fred. But not always. Thanks a lot. I can show you some products that failed. Came up with this idea called monster shoes, where you take these little monsters and lace them into your shoes like this. And we built a bunch of them, and um, I didn't want those either. So mostly, what IDEO designs though does work, and it works very well. Dave and his design teams create about 90 new products every year. The point is that we're not actually experts at any given area. You know, we're kind of experts on the process of how you design stuff. So we don't care if you give us a toothbrush, a toothpaste tube, a tractor, a space shuttle, you know, a chair. It's all the same to us. We, like, want to figure out how to innovate in, in, by using our process, applying it. And so for the next five days, the team will apply that process to bringing the supermarket shopping cart into the 21st century. Um, I think first we should maybe all acknowledge that it's kind of insane to do an entire, an entire project in a week. Project leader is Peter Skillman, a 35-year-old Stanford engineer. Project leader because he's good with groups, not because of seniority. He's only been at IDEO for six years. The rest of the team is eclectic, but that's typical here. Whitney Mortimer, Harvard MBA. Peter Coughlin, linguist. Tom Kelly, Dave's brother, marketing expert. Jane Fulton Suri, psychologist. Alex Kazax, 26, a biology major, who's turned down medical school three times because he's having too much fun at IDEO. Kids climbing up and doing this. Kids do that. Safety emerges early as an important issue. 22,000 child injuries a year, which is, and so they're hospitalized injuries. I mean, th yeah, there are many others. Not um, reported in the store. That's, you actually no, no, have to no, go no, to the emergency room. No, 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 that's hospitalized. Wow. Right. Uh, and so theft. It turns out a lot of carts are stolen. You know, what is the average life of a cart? Does it last two years, five years, ten years? And, and how big is this theft thing? 10 a.m. As the team works, it becomes clear there are no titles here, no permanent assignments. And the other side says, that gives us a lot of help, says, be safe. <laughs> Everyone appears to be equal, and they love to mock corporate America. I'll give you status. I'll give you a big red ball on a, on a, on a, on a post, and that says you're a big guy. If you got a ball, you're a senior vice president. <laughs> you know, what do I care? The desk, the red ball, it's all the same. <laughs> In a very innovative culture, you can't have a kind of hierarchy of here's the boss and the next person down, the next person down, the next person down, because it's impossible that the boss is the one who's had the insightful experience with shopping carts. It's just not possible. According to Kelly, even employees who merely listen to the boss don't add that much either. So you got to hire people who don't listen to you, and that, I don't think... Corporate America wants to hear that right yet. Um, I think we ought to start making those lists about the kinds of questions that we're going to ask. The team splits into groups to find out firsthand what the people who use, make, and repair shopping carts really think. Okay, go. The problem with the plastic cart is the wind catches it. Yeah. And these things uh, have been clocked at 35 across the parking lot. <laughs> oh. Man, that's actually a pretty good point. The, the trick is to find these real experts and so that you can learn much more quickly than you could by just kind of doing it in the normal way and, and trying to learn about it yourself. From everything I read, these things aren't that safe either, you know? Um, so probably the seat itself is going to have to be redesigned. 
what you're seeing here is the kind of social science, like anthropologists, you know, like you go and study tribes. What is it that, that they do that we can learn from that will help us design a better cart? One of the interesting things for me is looking at how people really don't like to let go of the cart, except for the professional shopper, whose strategy is to leave the cart at various places. Learn today. Um, people went off in the four corners of the earth and are coming back with the golden keys to the to innovation. A uh, shopping cart has been clocked at 35 miles an hour traveling through a parking lot in the wind. We were in the store, what, two hours? And, and it was truly frightening just to see the kind of stuff going on. You ought to designate some people to make damn sure that the store owner's point of view is represented. After nine straight hours, the team is tired. They call it a day. So, um, Everybody cool? Well, uh, that's great. Thanks a lot. We had a great time today. Yeah. Yeah. Get together and start here. Day two and the start of IDEO's unique brand of brainstorming. They call it a deep dive, a sort of total immersion in the problem at hand. IDEO's mantra for innovation is written everywhere. One conversation at a time, stay focused, encourage wild ideas, defer judgment, build on the ideas of others. Uh, that's the hardest thing for people to do is to uh, restrain themselves from uh, uh, criticizing an idea, so if anybody starts to nail an idea, they get the bell, you know. <laughs> the deep dive begins, and for the next few hours, the ideas pour out and are posted on the walls. Oh, the blind, the, the privacy blind, like when you're buying six cases of condoms, you, no one sees. It's more nesting is, uh, it, it sort of has to nest. If it doesn't nest, we don't have a solution. How about Velcro pants and, and Velcro seats for the kids, and you just drop them down on there. And like, like the Velcro line. seats? <laughs> Velcro pants for kids? Yeah, see, uh, you have to have some wild ideas. If, then you build on those wild, wild ideas, and they end up being uh, better ideas than if you said, if, you, if everybody only came up with sane things, you know, kind of appropriate things, you'd never, like, have any points to take off to, to build a, a really innovative idea. It's organized chaos. Organized chaos. It's not organized. Um, um, what it is, is it's focused chaos. By 11 a.m., the group begins narrowing down the hundreds of ideas written or drawn on the walls. How? By voting for them. Vote with your post-it, not, not with an idea that's cool, but with an idea that's cool and buildable. Um, if, it's, if it's too far out there and it can't be built in a day, then I don't think we should vote on it. Why not have you be the judge? You're the because, boss. Because I'm, I'm going to be wrong. It's the team that, that's Good able ideas. to really judge with the best yeah. idea. Otherwise, and, ideas wouldn't come out? That's right. Enlightened trial and error succeeds over the planning of lone genius. Enlightened trial and error succeeds over the planning of the lone genius. If anything sums up IDEO's approach, that is it. That and the focused chaos that seems to go with it. Um, I take a point of view. I call it the sport utility vehicle cart. It is noon. Kind of the Worried that the team the is drifting, what can only be called a group of self-appointed adults under Dave Kelly holds an informal side session. So we don't want to tell them what to build or else we take away the benefit no, of the whole thing, right? What needs should they optimize their solution to? Yes. The right, purpose right. is to refocus the deep dive. And maybe we arbitrarily say we do five teams. Four or five teams. Four or five. Four or five, you, you four or five teams, and we, and we give each team a need area. Hey, can we uh, grab everybody over to the uh, wall here? There has to be a command decision. It becomes very autocratic for a very short period of time in defining what things people are going to work on. Like it or not, the team is told it will split into groups to build mock-ups, covering four areas of concern that have been identified. Shopping, safety, checkout, and finding what you're looking for. I noticed that toward the end of the process, the adults took over. Yeah, that's because we, we have no choice but to, to stop that cycle. I mean, there's, um, if you don't work under time constraints, you, you could never get anything done because it's a messy process and go on forever. OK, Peter, we're done. Back at the shop, it is 6 o'clock, and the four mock-ups are ready for showing. Baskets also can be, if you think you will have more volume, baskets can be put in. A modular shopping cart you pile hand baskets onto. A high-tech cart that gets you through the traffic jam at checkout. That you could mount a scanner on the shopping cart so that you as the customer, as you pull it off the shelf, would scan each item. 
one that's built around child safety, and another that lets shoppers talk to the supermarket staff remotely. Uh, yeah, where can I find the yogurt? But the adults, again, decide more work needs to be done before the mock-ups can be combined into one last prototype. Why don't we have all the carts come up here for a second? I think you take a piece of each one of these ideas and kind of back it off a little bit and then put it in the, yeah, in the right. design. The design is still not there. But there's another motto at IDEO, fail often in order to succeed sooner. And some of the team will be up half the night trying to put together a design that finally does work. Um, so. It is day five, and Dave Kelly has no idea what the final cart looks like. Only the team does. If they kind of got their heads down, they don't look at me, I'm nervous. You know, if they say, wait till you see it, then I know we're in good shape. So I'm getting wait until you see it. I think it's, it, that'll be good. There it is! There it is! <laughs> so we took the best elements out of each prototype, designed this entire cart in a day, and then this cart was fabricated in a day with an amazing team of people in our machine shop pulling this off working in shifts throughout the night. Wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> so are we. <laughs> the cart, which is designed to cost about the same as today's carts, is different in every other way. Hand baskets that stack in a metal frame and major improvements for all. You, you just lift the handle up, you drop the, uh, put the children in, and then you can close the, um, the, the uh, handle right over them, and they instantly have some little bit of a work surface that they can play with. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm very proud of the team. I think it's, it's great. This, does this work for you? Works for me great. Yeah. It's also beautiful. I mean, let's, you know, take it over to a local supermarket and see what they say. Yeah, it works really well. I hope. The cart's wheels turn 90 degrees so it can move also sideways. sideways. No more lifting up the rear in a tight spot. And you shop in a totally different way. Rather than taking your cart everywhere you go in the store, through a crowded store like this, uh, it's much more efficient to take a small basket, rush around to where the, the uh, particular shelves are, and come and back and put them back. Put them here and treat this as like a center for your shopping. And with a high-tech scanner, so that in the future you skip the checkout traffic jam. Here's how you would scan an item. You'd reach over and pick up anything like, uh, like the salad dressing. And I would, I would scan it, and if I want to accept that item, I would just press plus and then drop it in my basket. Because stores don't yet have those high-tech scanners the team designed, checking out today means doing it the old-fashioned way. But the bags are hung on hooks on the cart's frame. Remember, there is no basket here. Talk to me about theft. There's no value in this cart without the basket, because you can't carry anything in it. It's useless to anybody. You can't use it as a barbecue. So it's not going to get stolen. That's right. So this ought to appeal to store owners, then. Yes. I love it. I think it looks yeah. great. At yeah. first, I was a little shocked, but I think it's you have some fantastic ideas here. It needs a little refining, but I think that it's great. I mean, we would, we would want them. It makes us feel great. Uh, and she also gave us some really good comments about how we can make this thing better. Just wherever you are, look around. The only thing that's not designed by somebody like is nature. So the trees are not designed by us. But everything you see, everything you see, every light fitting, every flower vase, every scale, every stand for fruit, everything is designed, has to go through this kind of process. And they can do a better or, or a, um, a better or worse job of innovating or improving, but everything is designed, it has to go through this process. It, it wasn't this effortless, and, oh my God, and, you know, so that's how it works thing that I saw there. It was actually hard work. A lot of hours. Also, an open mind, a boss who demands fresh ideas be quirky and clash with his, a belief that chaos can be constructive and teamwork a great deal of teamwork. And these are the recipe for how innovation takes place. This is Jack Smith for Nightline in Palo Alto, California. Results from two decades of R&D through partnerships with many companies around the world from Fortune 500 to startups. I'm going to just give you a brief introduction for you to, to understand how transversal is this tool across industries and across problem solving. 
On phase zero, basically the idea is to understand what is the context of the firm. Are you going to solve problems at the board level, strategic business unit level, department level? Who are the key decision makers? Because you need to know right from the beginning who is going to take the final decision. Otherwise, there is no point to solve the problem. And then, what are the environmental and critical challenges to solve? For example, we started uh, about four or five months ago a project with Jerónimo Martins Distribuição. We already have a video online that you can see it on the YouTube channel that uh, tells a little bit about the VCW experience inside Jerónimo Martins Distribuição. We did another project with MasterCard that I'm also going to speak briefly. Uh, and of course, if you go online, you also can see, learn more about this process. Another project we did in partnership with Average, that just did the presentation before, was with Casa da Moeda. And in this, in this particular context, we, we really had interesting challenges and the company liked so much the project that now has its own internal VCW, let's say its own internal Tiago, which is a kind of a chameleon framework adjusted to Casa da Moeda. So, to summarize, on this stage, you really have to understand what is going on, what is the company, and what is the market. Once we are done with this, it's time to raise the question. For example, what is the main challenge for the company? What is the main concern of the board? What is the main concern of the marketing director? For example, at Nova SPE, we did this already with seven different directors. Because, as you might imagine, each director has its own main concern. So, some examples. How to increase value for all stakeholders while cutting costs is a typical question. Which new product can we launch? When I say product, can be a service, for example. How can we increase revenues using our existing technology? Then we move to the next stage. Once the problem is defined, it's time to come up with solutions. So, let's not focus on the filters. Let's not focus on the things that kill the solutions. Let's focus 100% on the solutions. So, for this, we need to have the open mode. There are no good or bad ideas. You need to use both and and but. You have some uh, innovation methodologies that say you are only allowed to use and. You should focus on the quantity of the ideas rather than the quality, because at this stage you still don't have the filters, so you don't know which ones will be the final filters, correct? And then you should avoid the not invented year syndrome. Very often what happens is when somebody is giving an idea, you say, oh, I don't like this one because it comes from that person, and vice versa. And probably that's the best idea. So what we did, for example, with Jerónimo Martins distribution, we use many people, both external and, and internal stakeholders, to come up with solutions for the specific problem of Jerónimo Martins distribution. In the case of Casa da Moeda that um, uh, was told before, you're going to see the kind of experience that was generated there. Okay, so now we move to the filter stage. What we do on the filter stage is we try to understand what are the criteria that should be used to filter the ideas. Because we're going to have 500 ideas. In some cases, we had more. Think about if we are using open innovation, very often you can have thousands and thousands of ideas to generate solutions, correct? So the idea here is you should play both the open and closed mode. And the idea is to multiply and refine the ideas all the time. And you need to compare all the ideas and try to understand why some people want to kill some ideas, why some people want to select other ideas. So here it's very critical to involve the devil's advocate, not only the angel's advocate. Very often in companies they try to kill the devil's advocate because then they say solutions do not come fast. But we strongly believe that devils, they play a major role in terms of idea generation and in terms of the generation of the filters. The Wall Street Journal thought the same. 
And in a work that I did together with Sarah Janmir about this particular topic, they, they did a lot of media coverage across the globe addressing this particular uh, topic, which is why it's so important to involve the skeptical people in terms of idea generation, in terms of solving problems. So what has been done in this particular case at JMDA was precisely that, okay, in order to generate filters, the VCW team spoke with many different stakeholders, again, external and internal stakeholders inside the organization. This is the experience that we had at Casa da Moeda. this data is brought to the board. And the board then will decide which ones are the most important solutions, the ones that are really, really interesting to be analyzed, and then we'll say, okay, let's look to these filters. Of course, at this stage, the board will also generate new filters and will also generate new ideas. We'll create a ranking and then we'll try to align this with the company, with the vision of the, the board. So this is the experience that was done, at, uh, that we had at Jerónimo Martins Distribuição, where all the ideas and filters were presented to the board. This is the experience we had at MasterCard, where all the ideas and filters were presented to the board. And then this is the experience that we had at Casa da Moeda, when the board was analyzing the solutions. we had this meeting with the board, it's time for the funnel. In the funnel, what we do is we pick all the ideas that survived the initial stage, we start applying the filters, and then you start knowing which ones are really the most interesting solutions. The more solutions you have at the beginning, the better. And the more involved the board is on ranking the filters, the better. In some companies, I had to have different meetings with the board because, for example, the CFO was not present or the CEO was not present and so on. So it's very important that the final decision, the filter stage, is decided by all the people that are the critical decision makers. Otherwise, we'll need to go back again in the VCW process. For example, in the case of MasterCard, we start with 55 solutions and we finish with 10 winning solutions, which is something really impressive. Some of these solutions were spoken via Skype with a uh, master's card across the board. If you look to Casa da Moeda, we start with uh, 12 solutions after the meeting of the board, and we finish with four final solutions. So then it's time to operationalize, to con conce conceptualize the solutions. There are different ways of doing that. For example, you can organize fairs, you can develop posters, prototypes, videos. For example, what we did at Casa da Moeda is we gave training to all the teams about the VCW process so that they were involved in the process. They developed their own pitches, their own presentations, and then on the final stage, it was important to decide go, no go, or shall we go back on the VCW. So at this stage, operation, basically what you need to do is you need to apply the business model, you need to apply the three M's, man, minute, and money, and then you need to think if that is the issue, how to grow. If you decide to go ahead, of course you need to think that is not only about implementation, it's also about monitoring and control. 
For example, at Casa da Moeda, all the solutions that were presented went ahead, and the project went so well that guess what? Casa da Moeda decided to use the VCW uh, that I developed in partnership with Average to build a culture of problem solving, to industrialize innovation inside Casa da Moeda, and to build an innovation ecosystem that basically is solving problems all the time. So now you're gonna have a team responsible for applying this uh, inside there. As you see, there will be a governance model uh, and then the VCW will be used as a tool to bring the innovation partners on board. This is the VCW of Casa da Moeda, basically is the Tiago that you have down here, but now customized to Casa da Moeda. And then, based on this, Casa da Moeda had a really interesting initiative, which was basically the Innovation Day. As you can see, the, uh, the VCW is being used to support different initiatives inside Yensia. And it's really up to your imagination. Now the challenge I have for you is which challenge do you want to solve? Thank you very much. It was a great pleasure. Thank you.